Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to another uh, little trailer reaction thing, this time for TV shows. Um, Thunderbirds Argo Season 3, Part 3, and uh, Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat's Dracula, two very different trailers. Uh, the Thunderbirds one dro dropped last week, whilst the Dracula one dropped not too long ago today, at uh, time recording, uh, just gone 20 past, uh, 20 to 6 uh, p.m. So... And uh, back within the last hour or so uh, for that one. So, okay, um, Thunderbirds Argo Series 3 trailer, uh, part 3's trailer. Um, to, before we start, I'm not actually sure what they're doing with the structure of Series 3 because it's in three parts this time instead of two parts, like Series 1 and 2, and it's been a part per year. It's, uh, we had part 1 um, in spring 2018, part 2 in 2019, uh, I think it was in the spring as well possibly maybe the uh yeah it was in i think it was spring or winter and now we're getting part three in winter 2020 so i'm not sure what the structure is for these ones and there was a big gap between series two parts one and two and so much so that series two part two to series three part one's gap was only about three months um i think series one had the best gap with um from spring to autumn and uh, only a few months in the between and then between it was about a year or so or just under a year between part two and series two part one um but yeah, it depends on how the production works obviously uh, but anyway the trailer certainly looks like we're going to be seeing the thunderbirds uh, boys going into space uh scott virgil uh, alan Gordon and John. Well, John's already in space anyway, but he's going to help venture out a bit further. Plus, also Ko and Brains are going along for the ride, and um, obviously going to find Jeff Tracy. As if you've been watching Thunderbirds Are Go, you'll know that Jeff Tracy isn't really around. But in series three, they've been trying to find him. Uh, meanwhile, the Hood and the Chaos Crew, and maybe this other villain, perhaps possibly the mechanic back, or maybe it's a new guy. Uh, out to try and stop them. There's also possibly more adventures set on Earth. As there, there is it's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 episodes, 19 to 26. There's eight episodes. It's likely at least half of them will be on Earth, and the other half perhaps venturing into space. Um, or maybe we'll have an F, well, maybe one of those space episodes will be uh, just a normal space mission perhaps earlier on, and then towards the end of the series, perhaps just the last two episodes. Uh, maybe last three, or maybe it'll be a series arc towards the end of the series that they will be venturing into space to find Jeff Tracy, who seems to be lost in space. Um, so, yeah, this is looking interesting, and it's continuing the same vibes from the other trailers for Thunderbirds Are Go, and I think it's mostly upbeat vibes and mostly hopes for the future, as well as showing off the various missions and rescues that the Thunderbirds have to perform, that's the Thunderbirds characters, and the machines, uh, the characters in the pilots, the book, uh, the Tracy book, uh, brothers and company. <clears throat> so yeah, Thunderbirds Argo series three, looking like a uh, part three, looking like a really, uh, it's going to be a good uh, part. Um, hopefully there won't be an episode that will not be broadcast, uh, unlike series two, part two's Inferno, which was not broadcast due to having similarities to the Grenfell Tower uh, disaster in in the summer of 2017 and the episode would have been broadcast in November 2017 if it had been released as normal. Although I have to say, why isn't it included on the DVD releases? I mean, I can understand it not being broadcast or at least not immediately broadcast. Maybe later down the line it wouldn't be too bad. But why is it not on, not on the DVD? It's on streaming, so it's okay to go there. But why is it not on the DVDs? This is probably the reason why Series 2 doesn't have a complete series release. Hmm. I don't, has Series 3 even had DVD releases? So have they been stopping with those? That's questionable. Yeah, the DVD releases are also something they might need to consider working on. Um, anyway, so that, that that that's discussions for another time. The trailer for part three is really interesting. Um, well, interesting if you enjoy um, seeing um, Thunderbirds or people going to rescue other people with great machines and tools and stuff, facing the occasional bad guy, such as The Hood, who I swear never got his name revealed in the original TV series or in the two puppet films, but since then they've given him a name, um, which we see in the 2004 film and this series. Um, but yeah, that's looking interesting. As for Dracula, that's also looking interesting, but for different reasons. It's um, It has some similarities to a teaser trailer that came out a few months ago. I think the editing's a bit 
quickly cut to kind of either hide the horror and gore or make it even more horror horrific and gory. Um, and it does look pretty nasty. Uh, created by Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat based on the novel by Bram Stoker. I almost forgot the name. Um, and taking a look at uh, Dracula in a bit more of a personal detail. Uh, before we uh, continue, I have to say I have not seen any adaptation of Dracula, nor have I read the book. Although I have read a graphic novel version of it, I think at school, uh, secondary school. I've also read I read quite a few graphic novels at the school library, including one of Hound of the Baskervilles, which got me into Sherlock. Um, after reading it, Sherlock, The Hounds of the Baskervilles, was getting a B. Uh, I don't know if it was BBC One or BBC Three repeat on the Saturday before um, the, the writing back fall. Um, but I watched Hound of the Baskervilles, and that was great. Loved that. Was not actually allowed to watch writing back falls for reasons I can understand, but I did watch series one and series two before series three uh, on their rep on repeats on alibi and on bbc one respectively before series three came around um but yeah i pretty much got into sherlock holmes um through uh through that for from the graphic novel i read at secondary school got into sherlock holmes and sherlock the tv series through the graphic novel which got me in which got me interested in the sherlock tv series episode based on the hounds of the baskerville uh, Hound, Hound of the Basque, uh, the Hound of the Baskerville was the original story. Hound of Basque, the Hound of Baskerville was the 2012 Sherlock episode. So that's how I got into Sherlock Holmes um, that way. And War of the, War of the Worlds, I also wore, uh, read a graphic novel of that at, at secondary school. We did have a look at it in primary school, and we did watch the original films, the, the, the uh, 1953 and 2005 films. So and I'm bringing that up because I'm watched. I have not on broadcast, but on record the 2019 series that's recently aired. I've watched episodes one and two. Not the biggest fan of the first one. Liked the second one, though. Um, the third one I'm looking forward to re-watching when I've got the time. Um, hopefully on Monday. Um, so, yeah, that's basically... So I'll probably do a review, review of the entire series or maybe some in short individual reviews on those three after after watching that. Um, as for Dracula, that's looking pretty interesting. And... Uh, yeah, so that, that should be good. Like I said, I think got I think I, I actually I don't know if I read the graphic novel for Dracula, but I I know the story more or less. Um, even though I've never read the book or watched any of the other adaptations uh, yet, um, but this one looks interesting, and I like the idea that they're going to focus more on Dracula this time round than most of the other versions have. I think the guy they've got I can't remember his name, but I know he's a Danish actor. I think they've got they've cast him well, and I think. I think the uh, what was it Jonathan something uh, something whoever uh, play whoever was played by um, Keanu Reeves in the uh, Francis Ford Coppola version who apparently he didn't do a very good job in that um, unlike Gary Oldman who was apparently very good as Dracula um, and the film itself besides Reeves was very good apparently but like I said I haven't seen it yet but. Uh, Reeves' character from the Francis Ford Coppola film, um, he's uh, he's he's apparently good. I'm wondering if we're going to get Van Helsing, who was played by Peter Cushing in the Hammer version. Lee, uh, Christopher Lee was apparently Dracula quite a lot, quite a lot, especially in Hammer films. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see how Dracula goes. It's probably going to be very good. Um, by Mark Gates and Stephen Moffat, so it should be at least interesting. Um, <laughs> unless they go overboard like they did a little bit with Sherlock series 4 and quite a bit of Doctor Who in, during Stephen Moffat's time as showrunner but you know I've, I've got faith they'll at least deliver something interesting um, and I'm sure it'll be good um, so yeah I've got I've got hopes for that um, so yeah, yeah that's basically these two trailer reactions what did you think if you've seen either of these two trailers or what did you think of the other trailers that I did the reactions for on December the 10th so and check those out if you haven't already or the Doctor Who series 12 trailers and the No Time to Die trailers which got their own individual reactions um, on the Hooniversals for the two Doctor Who ones and No Time to Die on this channel along with the, no uh, the December the 10th ones links are in the description from that channel to the uh, ones not featured in that video uh, anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.